Boeing is trying to bring back their glory days. Once upon a time, they used to be titans of the space industry. Think McDonnell Douglas and North American Rockwell. But these days, they are hitting some big time snags. NASA's starting to get fed up of the Starliner's continued delays over the past six years. And while NASA's trying to salvage their commercial crew program, Boeing has been making some big mistakes. Dear NASA, enough is enough. Please pull the plug on Boeing Starliner. Find out more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. First off, let's take a look at Boeing CST-100 Starliner. Similar to other common U.S. capsules, the CST-100 spacecraft has a capsule with a truncated cone shape. It's a little bit larger than the Apollo Command Module and SpaceX Dragon 2, yet smaller than the next generation Orion under the development of Lockheed Martin. The capsule has a payload being up to seven passengers to LEO. For the inside, Boeing preferred making the design of both Starliner and Boeing's commercial aircraft, the 787 Dreamliner, in the uniform. It consists of a full range of manual controls and large displays that display a ton of crucial data. However, they are a bit redundant because the initial function of the capsule is just autonomous operation. The vehicle is supposed to be able to rendezvous and dock with the International Space Station by itself. Boeing pitched NASA on all this back in 2014. And for all intent and purpose, there are many modern features in Starliner's design. For instance, a completely weldless design with interlocking parts, 12 reusable command module thrusters for maneuvering, or a separate service module. One thing Starliner did have going for them that Dragon did not was reboost to the ISS. Boeing Starliner can perform altitude boost by robust aft orienting thrusters in the service modules and Reboost plays a main role in the capability of independent access to the ISS for NASA. Without it, NASA would be in a weak spot with Russia looming in the background. With that in mind, NASA also stated that SpaceX was working on potential modifications to Dragon concerning capabilities of station Reboost to Crew Dragon to sharpen its competitive edge. With 13,000 kilograms of launch mass, Starliner sticks out with its modern features and pretty large crew capacity. And while that looks good on paper, the reality is starkly different. If NASA's endgame is to combine SpaceX's Crew Dragon and Boeing's Starliner to realize their dreams of space exploration, they're in for a disappointment. It's safe to say that Crew Dragon is the fire extinguisher of NASA's money-burning woes caused by Starliner over the last six years. And the taxpayers start wondering whether the whole executive team over at Boeing just wants to milk as much money out of the project as possible. Let's take a look at how many failures the Boeing teams made with Starliner. First, in July 2018, an incident related to the leaking hypergolic propellant from the spacecraft happened while Boeing Starliner was undergoing tests in its abort systems. Before the first orbital test flight this year, Starliner flew once during the pad abort test in November 2019. Everything had gone according to plan until when the main parachutes deployed, only two rather than all three emerged from the capsule as it descended to the desert floor. The issue was still within the safety requirements of the system, according to NASA, but several years later, it turned out to be a big deal for both parties. One month later, in the first orbital flight test, they dropped the ball again, not with the parachutes, though. This time, they went to the wrong orbit. Specifically, it failed the capabilities and safety checks when its autonomous flight control system misfired shortly after launch, then drove the CST-100 to the wrong orbit instead of taking it to the ISS. Starliner's fate got a little brighter in the second test flight in 2022, when it was finally able to dock with the ISS. This had us thinking they might be able to take it to the next stage, the last planned test flight called the crewed flight test. The public once more hoped their tax dollars were actually paying for something useful. Then this year, Boeing announced not just one, but two detected issues on their spacecraft. The first one relates to the wrong number of parachutes, which has been unresolved since 2019. And then this year, things get more complicated. The soft link used on the suspension line of Starliner's three main parachutes has a failure load limit that's lower than previously thought. It means those links aren't able to handle the load of Starliner if one chute fails. And that's a deal breaker for NASA. The second one gets even more serious. The P213 glass cloth tape that covers the wiring harnesses throughout the Starliner's capsule are too flammable, which can cause major fire problems throughout the entire ship. It's safe to say that after six years, NASA and the taxpayers are running out of patience. 
SpaceX's Crew Dragon has been delivering cargo to and from the ISS since 2012, and during the time between 2020 and now, SpaceX has done six crew missions to the ISS, whereas Boeing Starliner has done only one successful flight test, and that was after multiple delays. And then last month, they opted to bail on their next test indefinitely. And this wasn't a good look for NASA, who, under public pressure, finally decided to do a deep dive into the technical issues with the spacecraft on May 25th. Patricia Sanders, chair of a NASA safety panel, declared, Given the number of remaining challenges to certification of Starliner, we strongly encourage NASA to step back and take a measured look at the remaining body of work with respect to flying CFT. This actually should have happened several years ago, because as you may notice, for over half a decade, six years to be exact, NASA, an agency funded by taxpayers, has invested more than half a billion dollars on basically nothing. Now, a lot of folks see Starliner as a tax siphoning project rather than a worthwhile investment, so NASA might need to put other options on the table. It's not an exaggeration to call this project of Boeing a tax waster. Let's look at the initial expenditure that NASA spent for the development of Boeing. $4.2 billion in their 2014 contracts, which is way more than the $2.6 billion SpaceX got at the same time. According to a recent report by NASA's OIG, a Starliner seat cost NASA $90 million, which is $55 million more than on a SpaceX Crew Dragon, or even what NASA pays Roscosmos for Soyuz seats. After crunching the numbers, it's a safe bet that NASA would save a lot of its annual allocation if they just focus on only one company. And right now, SpaceX looks like the best candidate. But NASA still wants to keep two options available. Why do they want to do that? Well, the reason's pretty simple. Collaborating with Boeing through the commercial crew programs comes from the fear of the monopoly of just one company. Historical economics tell us that a monopoly plays a crucial role on the market as a whole. It means you have a complete dependency on just one supplier, no matter how well it is. And if something goes wrong, you have no backup. Basically, you're locked into a situation where you may end up paying a lot of money you don't have because there's no one else competing in the business. That might be what has kept NASA waiting for Boeing to fix Starliner for so long. So, should NASA bail on this and pull the plug on Boeing Starliner? The answer, yes, might be advocated by the majority of people on social media, based on calculations about how much money it's going to take to fix the ongoing mistakes of Starliner, and if that'll even improve anything. Replacing all that P213 cloth tape that's around the entire vehicle is just one example. In the case of fearing the dark monopolistic scenario we just broke down for you, there's still a lot of brighter candidates out there for NASA, especially in the dynamic competitive market we're currently living in. Dream Chaser is a perfect example. No one wants to miss out on that golden opportunity. How about you? Do you agree with our opinions? Let us know with your comments below. And that's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments below because your feedback is very important to us and ultimately helps us make better videos for you to watch. Thank you so much for watching, and we hope to see you next time. Goodbye.